This is the last installment of our video for Nora's Vintage Afghan. And it's also a technique video for how to apply an I-cord to the edge of something. So I chose to not go with the crocheted border for this project. I really like the continuity of how the I-cord looked, how it is kind of a chunky line, and I really like that. It felt like it matched the texture of overall of the cables. So I chose to do that rather than the crocheted border that's in the pattern. So feel free to do what you like best, but what follows is the technique for how I went about applying that I-cord all the way around the edge of my huge Nora's Vintage Afghan, which I am in love with. Before we get started with that, I wanna give a big public shout out and a hearty thank you to our three new patrons this week, Caroline, Amy, and Rhonda. Thanks so much for supporting Pearl Together. I am able to bring you videos each and every week because of patron support. So if you wanna learn what I'm offering in for your small monthly pledge, head on over to patreon.com forward slash Pearl Together and check out the various tiers and benefits available. All right, let's get to it. To begin the I-cord bind off, we're going to want to cast on a few stitches. I'm going to just do a regular long tail cast on. And I start by making a slip knot. Now a lot of people do this one handed, I do not. If you want to see a more detailed version of how I do a long tailed cast on, you can click on the link down below in the video description. But I'm just casting on four stitches here. Now the other thing I'm going to do is begin my eye applied eye cord in the upper left hand corner of my afghan. This is the upper left hand corner block one. And you can see the garter stitch selvage edge, how we have these little, uh, these little bumps all the way down. So I'm going to focus on those bumps and I'm going to take the other needle that I have and I'm going to pick up a bunch of those all the way down. So I'm going to start at the first one here and I'm just going to pick these up as I'm going along. You can use a smaller DPN if that's easier for you to, to uh, isolate those and pick them up. I'm going to try to do the same portion of the garter stitch each time. So what I mean by that is the same section of the bumps. You can kind of see there's a part there and there's a part in the back and there's one here. There's like three bumps on this edge. So I'm just trying to do be consistent in how I'm picking them up as I go down. Okay, so I'm just going to pick up a few of those. You can do more if you like. And if you're using a circular needle, you could pick up like a whole bunch of them all at once. Or even the whole entire afghan if you were to join a whole bunch of cables all together with connectors. You could totally do that. So now I've got my four stitches with, and here's my working yarn. So what I want to do to attach this, I'm actually going to do this one right here on the very, very the very, very edge. All right, now that I've cast on my four, I'm going to transfer them back over to the left side. So make sure you have tip to tip or you're, you're sliding them over with the left tip going in behind so that you're not twisting anything. Then what I'm going to do is just simply knit four of them. Now you'll notice that your working yarn is coming off the back of this last darker stitch, and that's all right. So after I knit the first one, I'm gonna give that a little bit of a tug to kind of close up the tube that's gonna be created that will become the I cord. So I'm gonna knit three, and then when I get to this last one, I'm gonna knit these two together going through the back. Now you can do a regular knit two together if you like. You could even do a slip slip knit. But that's how we're going to attach this cord is by knitting it as a decrease with the last stitch. Okay, now I'm going to slide all four of these back over to the left needle. And then I'm going to repeat the same thing. So I'm going to knit three and then knit two together. Through the back loop is my preference. You can do, and again, you can do a knit two together. You could do a slip slip knit. I prefer the knit through the back loop because it, it orients it such that the stitch is flat and it will be flat at the bottom of that cord. So I do prefer that. Now we're gonna, again, we're gonna slide everything back over to the left hand needle and just carry on in this way all the way down. So I'm knitting that through the back loop again to connect. Okay, then I'm gonna slide these back over to the left hand needle and carry on in this way. So I'll show you how I'm gonna continue on with this and what I'll do when I get to the next block, which is turn 90 degrees, and I won't have this selvage edge. 
I'll actually have a, either a cast on or a bind off edge. I'll show you how that's gonna look differently here in a moment. I finished knitting the I-cord through all the stitches that I had picked up initially, so now I'll just take my other DPN and, and pick up some more of those and do it again. I think I am going to go get a little bit smaller DPN to pick these up just to make it go a little faster and be a little easier, and also reduce the risk of me splitting any of these stitches. But I am really loving how this looks. It's, it's on both sides. It's sucked down really nicely. It looks great on both sides. It looks really clean, um, and I don't have any little little gaps and it's super sturdy. The reason I wanted to do an I-cord bind off, um, as I mentioned earlier, rather than the crocheted is I just like the sturdiness of it. And I think it keeps in the continuity of, you know, the thickness and the, the tidiness of the cables. Um, one thing you're going to want to keep in mind is if you've chosen a needle size that matches the tension so that because you don't want too small of a needle set that's going to draw everything in because you want, you know, you want this to lay flat and be nice. Then the other thing you want to keep in mind is how often you pick up stitches. So if you did every single one, you might have too much I-cord. And if you do every other one, particularly on this uh, cast on edge or bind off edge, um, you'll just want to mess around with that and see what tension lays the flattest and is, you know, the nicest for your for your given gauge. So what I've been kind of doing here and experimenting with along this cast on edge is picking up every maybe two skip one and then one skip one so you'll see what i mean i've kind of been doing a little pattern like that i'll show you i'll pick up my next bit i'll pick up my next bunch here and show you what i'm talking about so i'll skip one here and i'll pick up two and then i'm going to skip one and pick up one and then i'm going to skip one and pick up two then I'll skip one and pick up one. And so I'm just picking up these edge edges. So you're gonna to wanna to just experiment with that and see if, if that is the combination that works best for whatever tension you have on this I-cord. So since I've blocked my squares already, I don't want anything to be drawing in. I want it to lay, I want it to be relaxed and lay flat. Um, because I blocked everything already, I wasn't intending to block it again. So I'll have to kind of, I'm gonna lay this out after I've done a couple of of blocks worth of edging and see and you know it doesn't take that long and again I keep saying this is this an heirloom quality piece and so you want it to be right if this is a little too tight then you know take it out and do it over again um, that's what I did between segments I was actually using a size US size 6 or 7 I forget uh, double point and I changed to a 9 because it was too tense it was drawing in I wanted the I-cord to be a little more loose than that um, so you may have to mess around and see what works best for your particular tension. All right, carry on with this side. I'll show you how we're going to manage the corner. My I-cord edging is looking great all the way across here. I've come up with a good combination of picking up stitches and the needle size that works well for my tension. I really like how it wraps around to the other side and it even looks clean on the wrong side. So that's awesome. I've come up to the corner now and I have finished picking up all the stitches all the way to the very edge. So in order to turn the corner without cutting it off or causing any um, pulling together, um, in a similar way, when you crochet a go around a corner, you often crochet into the same spot more than once. We're not going to pick up any extra stitches into the same spot, but we are going to add two or three extra I-cord rows to add some length in order to turn the corner. So I'm just putting these back on the little double point that I'm using to pick up needles with, and I'm just gonna do a couple of extra I-cord rows. I actually think I did three extra on the previous corner. Um, I did two, but I didn't like, I didn't think it laid quite flat enough, so I think I'm just gonna do three. So just knit across, and then if you have two double points that are the same size, you know, you can go ahead and slide it over and knit the other row. I'm just gonna go ahead and transfer this back onto my tiny needle so that I maintain my gauge because obviously the right hand working needle is the one that you wrap and that determines the size of the stitch. So I'm just gonna do three extra rows. Uh, you do two if you think that's enough, depending on the size needles that you've chosen and your gauge. Then we're just gonna turn the corner and continue picking, picking up stitches along the next side. Okay, so, whoops, here we go. I've got a split stitch there. All right. So now that I've added 
three extra rows, I'm gonna go ahead and start picking up stitches along this extra side, just like I have been all along. Now for me, what I discovered after some trial and error, whoops, I need to be all the way under the leg that I want here. What I discovered after a little trial and error is I am, depending on the square and how it's knitted, I am picking up every one of these legs on the cast on edge. So again, as I mentioned in the last segment, you need to do what's what works best for you and how, how it works for your tension to make everything lay flat. So I just pick up a few at a time like that again, and I think what I'm going to do now is take out this last stitch. So I've done two complete I-cord rows, and I'm going to go ahead and knit this one together through the back loop with the stitch I just picked up. And then we're just going to carry on as we have. Let me do about another inch or so, and I'll show you how that's going to lay. And we'll decide if we need to go back and um, add an extra plain I-cord row, or if that's going to go around the corner in a way that lays flat. All right, I think that looks great. I've gone around the corner. You can see where I've added those extra two rows, and then the third row I did attach. There is the tiniest of spaces right there. You can see my finger. Um, but when this is laying flat, you can't, you don't even notice that. I think that's great. There's enough slack. There's enough extra rows to turn the corner, but not too much that it's gapping. And so I think that's fantastic. Okay, I'm going to continue knitting the rest of the I-cord. All right, I'm excited. Uh, the I-cord is done all the way around all the corners except for this very last one. Now on this last one, I've only knitted um, one or two extra I cord rows because I'm going to graft this on here rather than turning the corner and carrying on. So you'll have to decide what works best for you and what looks the best and lays the flattest, um, but you'll want to do a little bit one one less than you have been at least because this the grafting row will count for one extra on the I cord. So the first thing we're going to do is just trim trim off a tail that's you know 10 or 12 inches long, maybe not even that long depending on what you're comfortable with, and get out your darning needle. And then I'm just going to per go in the first stitch like I'm purling because I'm bringing that yarn around to close the I-cord tube just like we've done from the past. In the past, the last stitch came off the end here, so I'm just going in as if to purl now. Then the first thing I want to do is look for the legs of the first row. Now the cast on row, we're gonna we don't want that because that's bumpy and that's your cast on. We want the actual stitch. So the first stitch here is going to be this one. I'm gonna go in underneath both legs of that and make sure that the yarn is coming around underneath this needle. And I'm gonna draw that up. Now just make it a little snug. You don't wanna, you know, don't make it too, too tight just now. Then I'm gonna go in this first stitch again as if to knit and go ahead and let that fall off and go into the next stitch as if to purl and pull your yarn through just snugly again. Now we're going to go around behind and look for the second stitch. Okay, there was the first one that we used and now I'm going to go in under the legs of this second one. Okay, I hope you can see that dark yarn is probably not the best. This was the cast on bump and so this is the first actual row. And I'm going to Again, I'm going to pull that up and then come back to the needle in as if to knit, let that drop off and go in the next stitch as if to purl. You'll notice this is like the Kitchener because it is. Okay, now we're going to look for the third stitch. And again, coming underneath this needle with the yarn, look for the le legs of the third stitch, not counting that cast on bump. Go ahead and pull the yarn through there, making sure it's clear of all the other bumps and mess. And I look, this looks a little fiddly and messy right now, but it will become clear, not to worry. And again, we're gonna come back to the needle, go in as if to knit, let that stitch fall off, and then come back underneath as if to purl, leaving that last one on still. So we're not quite finished with it. Now go find your last, your last knit stitch, now mine's a little bit messy too because I have some uh, extra tails that need to be woven in, but you can pull all that aside and find that very last stitch on the left side of that first row. And there went my 
double point because this is kind of loose here, but that's where that's where it was. So I'll just go ahead and put that back and hang on to it here so I can finish showing you. Okay, draw that up, making sure that it's not hung up on the end of your double point. And then we're gonna come back to this first stitch and go in as if to knit, just like we have been taking it off. And I know that's all loose and I'll adjust the tension here in a moment. Okay, now we can go in and we can adjust the tension throughout that row. But you can see, and I will do that, but you can see that that made a seamless graft. So, and then I just, you know, I'll just go in and, and fuss around evening out that tension and obviously weaving in the ends. So, but you get the gist of it and that's what needs to happen. So I'm gonna weave in all these ends and make everything look nice. But I'm super happy with my I-cord edging all the way around the grafting. So like I said, I have some little ends here and there I need to weave in, actually a lot of them. So that'll be some Netflix work there and stuff to trim up where I've joined skeins. But I'm overall really happy with my super cozy blanket and I'll drop a picture for you. Well, that wraps up the longest knit along I've ever done. Thanks so much for joining me. It's been almost two years doing these blocks every single month and we're wrapping it up. I'd love to see the photos of your finished afghans. Post in the Ravelry group. There's a thread just for Nora's vintage afghan. If you're on Instagram, tag me there. I'd love to see your, your work. If you appreciate these videos, hit like and subscribe and join me over on Patreon if you can. Thanks so much.